Hello and welcome back to my channel. My name is Joni and I am the blogger behind SimpleLivingMama.com and in today's video I want to share with you guys about My Father's World Creation to the Greeks. This is our current main curriculum. I am using it with a third grader and a fifth grader. My first grader is also tagging along a little bit. We're currently on week 24. Um, but I wanted to give you guys an overview of this particular uh, curriculum, show you how I have it set up. I brought in a few of the things that come with this curriculum. Um, not every single thing though, I didn't pull everything off of the shelves. I will have a blog post that accompanies this video that goes into detail about what all is included with this particular curriculum. Um, as well as, you know, how I have it set up and all of that stuff. Um, I will have another video that goes into detail about stuff that I've added to this curriculum. So let's start at the very beginning. What is this creation to the Greeks? So if you know anything about My Father's World, they have um, programs that are for kindergarten and first grade. Um, and you typically don't teach your kids together in kindergarten and first grade. They have um, a program called Adventures in U.S. History that's for second and third graders, second or third graders, depending on when you start My Father's World. If you start at kindergarten, then you're going to use Adventures in Second Grade. If you come to My Father's World later and you have a third grader, then you could start with Adventures before moving into the family cycle, which Creation to the Greeks is part of the family cycle. The very first... Um, curriculum in the family cycle is exploring countries and cultures. It's not history. It is geography and you're learning about different parts of the world. You're learning about different cultures and different countries and it's it's really awesome. We did it last year and I loved it. So when your kids hit second grade, they can all be taught together from second to eighth grade with the family cycle. Creation to the Greeks is the second curriculum or the second year in the family cycle. Um, it is a chronological history curriculum. So like I said, when you start with ECC, you are not doing history, but then when you start creation to the Greeks, you are starting the history cycle with creation and we're going up to ancient Greece in this particular curriculum. It is a Bible based curriculum. So this particular CTG is very, very heavy on the old Testament and the Old Testament is woven into the history, and I love that about it. But um, that is something to be aware of. Obviously, it's called My Father's World. It's a Christian curriculum, and Bible and history are tied together very closely. So that is something that I have loved about it. And um, yeah, so I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna talk to you guys about this particular uh, curriculum, Creation to the Greeks. We um, bought the basic package. So my father's world typically has two options. Um, it's a boxed curriculum. They have a basic package, which doesn't include extras like art and music. Then they have a deluxe package, which does include the art and the music. Because we do a lot of different things for art and music, I decided to save money and just purchase the basic package, which includes Bible, history, science, and then um, just lots of little extras like uh, biblical things, timelines, um, stuff like that, okay? So we are studying right now with, on week 24 in particular, we are studying about um, David and Bathsheba, um, King Solomon and Solomon's glory. Science is related to birds and fish. Now, if you've been following me for a while, you know that I also use the Good and the Beautiful Science. I kind of tie them both together. Um, my Father's World Creation to the Greeks uses the book Science in the Beginning. Everything is laid out for you, tells you exactly what supplies you're gonna need, which pages in the book that you will be using with your kids and all of that stuff. Um, we are actually going to start picking up science in the beginning here this week in particular because I do want to do a little bit of classification with the kids and the five senses is something else that um, 
is scheduled in Creation to the Greeks. So I will be using some of Science in the beginning. I did use a lot of the Good and Beautiful for water and for um, energy and all of that stuff. So just something to note about me and my particular case. My father's world does allow flexibility. Um, not included in the um, basic or deluxe curriculum package for second to eighth graders is language arts, math, foreign language. You get to decide what you wanna use for those particular topics. My Father's World does have recommended resources and they sell things um, for language arts, math, and um, spelling and all of that that you can purchase from their website. Um, over time, I started completely My Father's World and over time I, I started using some other things. So, um, I did not purchase any My Father's World language arts or math this year. So we are just using them for Bible, for history, and then some of the science, um, read alouds, all of that stuff. My Father's World teacher's manual includes an awesome book list at the back for each week. I love their book list. I go through their book list and um, choose what I want from my library. And that is what we what we do. That's like where our main extra read alouds and stuff come from. So that is something else that I love about my father's world. Now, when you get your curriculum, you get several different books. I'll show you some of the things. So first of all, you get um, the teacher's manual, which like I said, it is um, for all of those subjects, Bible, history, science. It tells you how to set it all up and everything. It tells you exactly how to prepare. Um, that is one, one thing that I've loved about my father's world. As a new homeschooling mom, someone with no experience homeschooling, it made it extremely easy for me. There's teaching tips included in the teacher's manual. And um, let's see. They even have like sample schedules and everything. So it's just awesome. All of the memory verses are listed at the front, so you get the full list of memory verses that you're going to be studying and learning with your kids. So like I said, like I've said in previous videos anyway, um, all of our memory work, Bible memory work, comes from my father's world. Okay, and then this is a look at how the, the week is laid out. Um, it's not Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, or anything like that, but there is a five-day homeschool week. The last day, which is Friday for us, is extremely light. As you can see, there's not a whole lot that's ever really planned on Fridays, so I'm always able to work it out to where we have a four-day school week with this curriculum. Um, down here at the very bottom is where they have stuff from the deluxe package. So, you know, the history and the music is all listed down here. Since I don't do their history or music, I just ignore the bottom part. Um, at the top, so you have each of your days here. So it tells you what you're going to be studying here at the very top. And then it goes into detail. Here's your memory verse. Here's your history. Um, we are studying vocabulary with this particular curriculum as well. And I'll show you the vocabulary book here in a little bit. We are learning Greek roots, so it tells you um, about that, which one that you're gonna be studying and what you need to do with that particular Greek root. Um, this can be used or can be ignored. This isn't listed every single uh, week, but it tells you if you are using their recommended resources for English and math, it has all of that here as well. And then of course you get into the history, the notebook, the timeline, um, book basket, and then science. So all of that is here on the grid. And then each day is broken down into notes, making it very easy for you to follow and um, know what you need to do. So that is an awesome thing about My Father's World. So that's the teacher's manual. You get student sheets with your curriculum and your student is to create a student notebook. So each pack of student sheets comes with a cover like this and I use a binder which is the method that is recommended. 
Um, in the teacher's manual, there are moms who do this differently. This is how I do it. Um, and I just stick the, the cover right here. And then inside the binder at the front, the kids keep their timeline pieces and we cut those off, you know, as we come to them in the teacher's manual. And then what I do is I have um, three different dividers for our history notebooks. And the first one is our Bible. So the kids um, have their list of memory verses. I even have some saved from last year when we studied the book of Matthew. And then they have their scripture copy work. Now sometimes they use regular paper and then sometimes if I remember, um, I will use mamagen.com. She has lots of printables that go along with my father's world and just have them copy um, the Bible verse onto a printable like that to keep it super simple and easy. And then the next section of their student notebooks is our vocabulary. So my father's world recommends that you do vocabulary flashcards or index cards and you keep them in a little box. I didn't want to do all of that. I didn't want to try to keep up with it. Um, the file section in the Facebook group for My Father's World Creation to the Greeks has these printables. So this is what we use. The kids write the Greek root, they write the meaning, they draw a picture, and then they're supposed to write derivatives. And then on the back, which I don't think we did it this week, we didn't get to it. On the back, on a different day, they write some sentences with um, the derivatives and stuff. So also I do tests that I get from that particular group. Here's an example of it. So they um, get tested on those Greek roots as well and we just keep it here in the notebook. And then the very last section is our history section and these are the student sheets that come from my father's world and each time we complete a student sheet we stick it into the history section so the kids have maps that they're doing um and writing sentences this is my third grader so writing sentences about different things that we're studying so um that is where all of that goes and that's how we keep up with it. At the end of the year, I will combine everything from their student notebooks and I will bind it for them and that and we'll store it like that. But just as we go about the year, before I bind it all up together, we keep it in the binder. When I don't give my kids all their student sheets at one time. What I do is I keep a giant binder for myself. Um, I think it's a two inch binder. It was my husband's old algebra binder. And I put each week's student sheets in page protectors. And then as we come to them, I will pull them out for the kids um, and then give it to them to, to complete and put into their own binder. So um, that's how I have done it for years. I keep all of our extra student sheets in my own binder before I give them to the kids and then the kids do the student sheets and then put them in their binder in an organized fashion. Okay, let's talk timeline. My Father's World does suggest you do a wall, time, wall timeline, I believe. And I did that um, with first grade, when we were in first grade. This house, I didn't really want all of our timeline stuff up on the wall. So what I did was I purchased these timeline books from Amazon, it's a portable timeline. Each of my kids have one and it's fine because in the student sheets they each have timeline pieces. So they get to keep their own timeline. Um, they just take the timeline pieces and glue them into the appropriate spot and it works out just fine. So. And sometimes we also add things when we're studying different <laughs> composers, when we use um, you know, our own music and art curriculum and stuff like that. We add our own stuff too, so that's helpful as well. All right, so I think now what I'm gonna do is show you the books that I did pull in here. I hope that you kind of understand a little bit more about how the curriculum works how I set it up. It's very, very simple. It tells you exactly what to do. It, it's 
so easy, honestly. Um, one of the reasons that I chose it is because of the teacher's manual, the guides laid out. I do now have that I have more, um, I guess, confidence in homeschooling. I can change things up, no problem, but I still like having that easy teacher's manual to fall back on. All right, so like I said, we are studying English. Uh, this is called English from the Roots Up. We're doing the Greek Roots this year. This book will actually be used this year and next year when we do Rome to Reformation. So um, we'll be learning Latin next year, but right now we're doing the Greek Roots and it just looks like this. This is the last one that we did. I write the word, the root up on the board. I'll write the meaning on the board. I'll write some of the derivatives. We'll talk about it, look up words in the dictionary that um, are derived from our Greek root. We use our printable sheets every week instead of index cards, and it works out really well. So this book is one that is used two years, I believe. Another one of our main, this is our one of our main history books is the Usborne Internet Linked Ancient World Encyclopedia. Um, I love Usborne books, so this is fun. Um, pages are assigned in the teacher's manual, so I will read the pages to the kids. We'll look at the pictures and then we'll discuss what we've read. Now, my father's world for ancient history uses a textbook, which not everybody is excited about, but um, they use Streams of Civilizations, Volume 1, which in later stages, like next year, we will be using Story of the World as our main history text. But they start off for ancient history with Streams of Civilizations. Now, it is, it's a textbook, um, so it can be, it can be a little dry, Typically what I do is I read the information. If I think my kids won't have any issues with it, I'll read it aloud to them. It's broken down in the teacher's manual in small chunks, so you're not reading like a whole entire chapter at one time because the kids are obviously not going to absorb that much information from a textbook in one go around anyway. I mean, sometimes you're only reading like a little box or something for the lesson. So. I mean, it's pretty simple. You're not making the kids answer comprehensive questions or anything like that. But um, it has provided us some good information and I like the maps that are in here and I like a lot of the pictures as well. So um, I don't, I know I've read in the past why they use Dreams of Civilizations instead of Story of the World. And I can't even tell you why now, um, I don't remember. But there is a reason why they use Streams of Civilizations. That might be something that I'll have to add to the blog post after I go back and reread it. I am a human mom with six kids and can't remember every single thing sometimes without reference. So, My Father's World Creation to the Greeks is very strong in the Old Testament. Um, a lot of the Old Testament is tied to the history work that we are doing. This is the illustrated family Bible. It is absolutely gorgeous. The kids love it. So I will read to the kids from our regular Bible. I actually use the one from my father's world adventure still. I'll read the scriptures from there and then we will find the accompanying page which is listed in the teacher's manual um, and look at the illustrated Bible. And the kids love it. It's so engaging. We have had so many great discussions from this Bible. Um, the last one that we had a really good talk about was uh, David and Goliath. So this one is used throughout multiple years, I believe, and it is just awesome. I love this Bible. Now, we studied ancient Egypt for several, several weeks. Um, it was a lot of fun. I will say this. I didn't get to do a lot of hands-on activities with the kids just simply because I didn't prepare enough. I didn't have a lot of like the art stuff on hand and we didn't always have time to do a lot of the things. Um, My Father's World came with a really cool ancient Egypt book that had a lot of different projects in it um, and we didn't really get to do that, like I said. So um, we did do some and my kids did do some artwork, like just pencil drawing and stuff like that. 
So it was a lot of fun. Um, and I think our favorite part of Ancient Egypt was definitely the read alouds. And like I said, I will share all of those later on down the road, which I guess me being someone who loves literature, that would definitely be a huge part of our homeschool and probably something that we focus on a lot in our homeschool. So something else, especially in the very, very beginning of the curriculum, they there's a book that comes with the curriculum and I forgot to pull it out and it's called Celebrating Biblical Feasts. And it tells you how to set up different biblical feasts that go along with um, what we're learning about the Old Testament and Jewish history and stuff like that. I did not do very many, I don't think I did any actually, of the biblical feasts. We talked about them. We read a book called All of a Kind Family, which um, is a living book. It is uh, a great fiction book. And it also includes some of those biblical feasts, um, you know, in the storyline. So we did do that. I do plan to do Passover, which we haven't hit in our curriculum yet. It hasn't been scheduled yet. I do plan to do that one with the kids. I think that one will be a lot of fun. Um, but yeah, that's something else to keep in mind. Not every mom can do the biblical feast. A lot of them don't. Um, if you do have the extra time, the energy, and the resources to do them, then it is recommended because it just adds another element of fun to your homeschool. So, right now, um, actually, we're not studying ancient Greece right this second. I think we're going to pick it back up maybe in a couple of weeks. But we did read the Trojan Horse. This comes with the curriculum. We talked about the Trojan Horse. My kids get all the jokes about it now, and it was um, a lot of fun. And we are studying different Greek gods and mythology and really, you know, learning the difference between our religion and, and those myths and those, you know, what other people thought, what different civilizations believed. So it has just been such an enriching time for the kids and I. I love getting to sit down with them and have these kinds of conversations. This is one of our current read-alouds, the children's homer. Um, I remember reading the Iliad and the Odyssey in seventh, eighth grade, maybe, maybe ninth grade. Um, this is the children's homer. It breaks it down in a little bit easier terms. There's some pictures in here and we read about a chapter a day and the kids have been enjoying it so far. I wouldn't say it's their favorite, but um, they are following the storyline and understanding what's going on. Now, before I conclude, I do want to show you the science in the beginning. Science in the Beginning is a pretty cool book because it follows the seven days of creation. So, you know, you're going to start with day one, learning about light and all of that stuff. And then, um, you know, you're going to keep going forth through the days of creation. There's 90 lessons listed in here. I'm not sure that all lessons are listed in the teacher's manual for you to do. Um, it is a possibility, but like I said, I don't know for sure. There are tons of experiments in here. I know Rainbow Resource actually sells a kit um, that would help help you uh, help you finish these experiments and actually do the experiments rather than having to gather tons of materials for yourself. There's um, you know you're learning about light and air and a little bit about weather, um, winds, and then of course they move forward with land, sea, and plants, which that's one thing that we're not touching on this year is plants. Um, we will study botany later on down the road though. Um, day four is sun, moon, and stars, something else we're not touching on this year because we have done an astronomy unit in the past. I actually did it as a summer study, and then we are studying astronomy with Rome to Reformation as well. So I don't feel bad about not doing that one. But um, we are going to do day five, swimmers and flyers, just because I'm not sure when we're gonna hit on this um, later on. We have done a uh, ocean study with the Good and the Beautiful. 
but um, you know, I just wanted to do some of the things that are listed in this book in the teacher's manual this year. So a little bit about classification and then um, also learning more about birds and fish and how fish breathe because my kids have been asking me how do fish breathe. So there we go, there's a lesson right there. And um, let's see. And then day six is land animals and people. And we'll go over animals a little bit. And then of course I said I really wanted to, to do the five senses because that's something that I have not taught the kids before. So we'll definitely be doing those lessons. So that is at the back, lesson 83, the sense of smell. So I think that's everything I wanted to talk to you guys about with this. I, I showed you how I got it set up with my binders. Um, keep it simple like that. I have shelves in my dining room where I just keep all of our books and um, I will look at my teacher's manual in the morning. I will see which books I need to use. I will pull the books off the shelf and set them on the table so they're right there ready to go before we get started on our Bible lesson. We'll sit down, we'll do Bible, we'll pray, we will um, do our homeschool garden morning time stuff and that's where I get my my music, my composer study, and my artist study, and all of that from. Of course, you can, if you're not into that, you can always purchase the deluxe package and do the uh, the music, composer studies, and artist studies from My Father's World directly and um, the curriculum that they recommend for that. So we'll do all of that stuff in the morning, then we'll do a history or a science lesson. Sometimes we do both, depending on how time is. Then, of course, in the afternoons we are Usually, after that, um, it's either lunch time, so we'll break, or if we have enough time, we'll start on all of our independent work with the kids. So that's how my homeschool day runs, just a quick, brief overview of how it runs. Um, and yeah, if you have any questions about my father's world creations to the Greeks, just leave a comment down below. I have a coupon code. If you purchase from my father's world and you spend over $150, you can get free ocean cookie cutters with my code SLM2020. That's very helpful. Um, the ocean cookie cutters are fun for younger kids, even older kids, you know, who doesn't like playing with cookie cutters? So um, that's just a fun way for us to say thank you. And um, yeah, I will talk to you guys in the next video. Bye.